Welcome back to Frontline News. I am Aisha Nation. It's now time for Frontline Business. The parliamentary opposition has proposed that the motor vehicle import policy be changed in light of the growing use of electric vehicles around the world. Philip Paulwell, the opposition spokesman on energy, while speaking at the sectoral debate on Wednesday, disclosed that every effort should be made to ensure that Jamaica is not left behind in terms of emerging technology. We have to urge the government to note the rapid development taking place in the use of electric vehicles. Again, we should not wait for these developments to pass us by. We need to anticipate them, um, anticipate these revolutionary changes and prepare for full adoption. So now is the time to prepare and have regulations in place, while at the same time ensuring that the construction of appropriate infrastructure can now commence. Now is the time to modify the motor vehicle import policy to provide for full acceptance of electric vehicles. The Bank of Jamaica BOJ reports that overall credit conditions to the private sector remained largely unchanged in the December 2020 quarter compared to the previous three months. This result, according to the BOJ, reflects the fact that secured loan terms remained largely unchanged while unsecured loan terms tightened. The easing of the interest rates partly offset the tightening of maximum credit line size and loan monitoring conditions in unsecured lending. According to lenders, credit conditions were projected to tighten in the March 2021 quarter but remained unchanged in the June 2021 quarter. This outlook, according to BOJ, indicates that lenders are satisfied with previous changes made to satisfy borrowers during the pandemic but plans to tighten conditions as a risk mitigation measure. Heathrow Airport has refused to allow extra flights from India before the country is added to the UK travel red list on Friday. It turned down requests from airlines because of concerns about queues at passport control. The airport told the BBC that it did not want to exacerbate existing pressures at the border by allowing more passengers to fly in. Effective Friday morning, many arrivals from India will be refused entry. And British and Irish passport holders and people with UK residence rights will also be allowed in but must quarantine at hotels for 10 days. After harsh comments, the treaties between Australia and China are in the abyss, plunging business deals and closing doors of opportunities for Australians. More from the CNN. 2015, Australia and China sign a free trade agreement, and Aussie winemakers are among the big winners. The removal of tariffs supercharged a growing industry. Then, following a single statement, it dried up. It's important that we learn the lessons of how this pandemic started so we could move on any future pandemic wherever it starts. That call for an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19 left a bad taste in the mouths of the Chinese government. And soon after, China hit Australian export products with blocks and huge tariffs. Number two diplomat in Australia, Wang Xining, said China felt like Caesar betrayed by his friend Brutus. Temporary duties of up to 212% were slapped on Australian wine, and a probe opened into alleged Australian dumping of cheap product on the Chinese market. It's margins on margins. So it could be quadrupling of our price which pretty much puts us out of the marketplace. In December 2019, Australia exported over $134 million worth of wine to China. In December 2020, just $3 million. Bruce Tyrrell says the wines from his family vineyard in the Hunter Valley north of Sydney are particularly pleasing to the Chinese palate, fruity and acidic. Just like his government in Canberra, Tyrrell believes the rising taste for Australian wine in China defies Beijing's accusation that Australia has been dumping its cheap stuff. And if we were dumping, why did the average price of our exports to China go up by 30% in four years? That just makes the dumping accusation complete rubbish. Someone's, someone's dreamed it up. Before the tariff hike on Australian product, only France was shipping more wine to China. Emmanuel Bria, a small part of that, a Frenchman with a love for Australian wine. He says Chinese customers love it too, so much so he only sells Australian at his shop in Hong Kong. But he's had to put his business shipping wine from Melbourne to Shanghai on ice. He was a lot of demand for, for this wine, but not anymore. <laughs> 
just hoping that he won't last forever. And it's just for a short period of time and things will get better. Until then, other countries eye up the gap in the Chinese market. With Australia kicked out of China, uh, I would think the Europeans would be in there like a rat up a rafter. And in the immediate term, Australian winemakers will look to recoup some of their lost sales close to home. As bars and restaurants here reopen after COVID-19 lockdowns. In Thursday's trading session, the JSE Combined Index advanced by 415.62 points to close at just over 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 90 stocks, of which 38 advanced, 34 declined, and 18 traded firm. Now the Junior Market Index advanced by 23.63 points to close at just over 3,000 units. Stocks advanced for... 1834 Investments, Access Financial Services, Burrito Investments, Berger Paints Jamaica Limited and Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited. Stocks declined for 138 Students Living Jamaica, AMG Packaging and Paper Company, Caribbean Cream, Sibony Group and Consolidated Bakeries Jamaica Limited. Now trading firm were Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances, Careers Limited, Dolphin Cove, First Rock Capital Holdings and First Rock Capital Holdings Limited USD. Wigton Wind Farm Limited Ordinary Shears was a volume leader with 2.4 million units, followed by Lasco Manufacturing Limited with 2.3 million units and JMMB Group Limited with 1.2 million units. And now for the foreign exchange. All prices were little changed on Thursday as concerns over lower crude production in Libya offset expectations that rising coronavirus cases in India and Japan would cause energy demand to decline. Brent crude futures fell seven cents to settle at $65.25 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI crude fell six cents to settle at $61.29 a barrel. And that's it for Frontline Business. I am Maisha Nation, wishing you pleasant viewing. <music>